welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christy. How are you guys hanging in there during this quarantine? This mama is good because I colored my hair today, so not gray anymore. <laughs> Yay! So today we are going to do another little just craft with me tutorial, whatever you want to call it. We're going to make this fun little anthropology inspired dupe. I guess, whichever you want to call it. And it's a knife holder for your kitchen. And it is so cute. And we're going to use probably some things from the Dollar Tree, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, something like that, and see if we can put it together. Make sure before you leave today that you hit that subscribe button. Click the little bell right next to it so that YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. For all of you guys that have subscribed already, thank you so much. All right, let's get started. Here are the supplies we are going to need. And we're gonna start off by taking these two canvases from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna open those up and we are going to remove the actual canvas from the frame. And this time I'm going to use this little staple remover that I had talked about in my last video. This thing is amazing if you don't have one and you take apart these Dollar Tree frames very often you should get one because it works so well. I did not have to be on the struggle bus during this video, thanks to this staple remover. We are gonna be using these Dollar Tree canvases, well, the frame of the canvas, as the actual frame or body of our knife holder. With the one that I made, I'm using two of the eight by 10 canvases from the Dollar Tree. You could use any size that you want to, depending on what size knives you're going to put in the actual knife holder at the end. Um, you could also build a frame out of just wood. I just thought this would be easier than building my own frame from scratch. And that way I can kind of use the canvases as my frame. Okay, now we've got our canvases loose from the frame itself. We're gonna take our Dollar Tree foam board and we're going to trace inside the frame and that way the foam board can sit snug inside the actual frame. Make sure if you guys make it to the end of this video and, and you liked the video to give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment and tell me that you liked it. I haven't actually seen this tutorial on YouTube anywhere, so I'm not sure if anyone has ever made this before or not, but I thought this item was so cute. And when I get done with it, it is adorable. Even my husband was shocked. He was like, this turned out so cute. So I can't wait for you guys to make it. I'm just trimming my foam board so that it will fit really nice and tight inside that frame. And then once I get it in there, I'm going to run a little bead of hot glue around the front and back side so that it stays locked in there really well because this is what we're going to actually glue our Jingo blocks and our paint stir sticks too. So this part needs to be good and strong. And as you can kind of see here, I'm just going right around the edge, just giving that little hot glue barrier any part that there's a small little crack or hole where it didn't fill in exactly, I'm just filling it in with hot glue. And that way it's completely sealed all the way around. Now I am struggling with my glue gun here. This is a new glue gun that my husband got me. And it's one of those Surebonder, like cordless ones that you can charge and it, I have had nothing but trouble with it. Um, I keep trying to use it and every once in a while a little bit will come out. But other than that, I keep pulling the trigger and it it's just like p 
pushing the glue stick in there, but it's not actually pushing any glue out. So I don't know what the issue is with it, but I have had nothing but trouble with it. So I'm going back to my 40 year old glue gun here, which is this trusty old guy. And we are just sealing off all of those edges. Like I said, I'm just kind of keeping the nozzle up in there just so it like really pushes the glue down in there. And here I'm getting out just a little bit, uh, it's like a wood dowel. I think it's like a half inch square wood dowel. And I'm taking this little mini, like it's just a cutoff saw that I got at Harbor Freight. And I like it because it's so small and it doesn't make a lot of sawdust. So I can use it right there in my craft room. Um, it wasn't cutting all the way through this dowel and I'm not sure why it would cut like most of the way through and then I would have to flip it over and cut it. So a couple of my cuts were just a little off since I flipped it, I didn't get it exactly lined up. So I had to cut a few extra, but I finally got it. Okay, and I was finally able to get four cut that were almost exactly the same length. So they will be close enough. And then here I'm going in and cutting some of my Jenga blocks in half. I didn't measure them, I just kind of eyeballed it because when you do glue the Jenga blocks onto the front side of your little knife holder, there's a little bit of give so you can kind of Put a little bit of um, spacing around the blocks so they don't have to be exact as long as they're pretty close and I mean you could measure them and actually draw a line if you wanted to but like I said it's not gonna be that big of a deal so um, I just cut I, don't, I would say probably 10 or 15 of them in half and I will show you later why we needed some cut in half it was so we could offset some of those so we won't have a straight line up and down on all of the jingle blocks when we get to the end. Now we are going to start staining. That is just some antiquing wax. And I'm adding a little bit of water to it. And I'm gonna use that as my stain. And it actually works really well. So I just brush it on and then go back and kind of wipe it off like you would with a stain. On this frame part, you will see some of it in the end. So I just went ahead and did all three sides that you can see and that way if any showed through the jingle blocks or anything it, it wouldn't look weird and then I'm going through and doing all of my jingle blocks and those four little square wooden dowels that I'm going to use to put the corners together and I sped this up so you wouldn't have to sit there and watch it all now I'm taking the four square dowels and I'm putting half wood glue and half hot glue and I'm putting it on each corner. I am making sure the side that is flat from my foam board is laying down against my table because I want the side that has a little bit of space on the inside 
of my wood holder and that way I've got a flat surface to glue all of my wood to on the outside. I'm going back here and adding just a little bit of extra hot glue around the inside edges just so it holds really well until I get it put together completely. And then I will go back and add a little bit more glue once I get it put together. So I'm making sure it lines up here before I put the glue on. And then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm putting half wood glue and then I'm going to put half hot glue and that way it will have a better hold in the end. And the same thing here, I'm going to put the side that is completely flat up against me so it will be on the outside so I will have a flat surface to glue my wood to. And then here I'm going back again and putting a little bit of extra hot glue just around those connection points so that it holds really well while that wood glue is drying. And I am going to set this down and put a little bit of weight on top of it just so it dries really good and connected where that wood and glue once is. This has a chance to dry for a little bit. I'm going to go back and take some more of my foam board and I'm going to fill in the sides where I just make made edges by putting those wooden dowels in. I'm going to fill in those side pieces. I'm going to glue them in just like I did before and that way I will have a flat surface to glue to on the sides of the box as well. And then after I do the sides, I'm gonna go back and do the bottom of the box the same way. I'm gonna cut out a piece of foam board and hot glue it in like I did before, filling in any little cracks. And by the time I get done with this piece, it is so sturdy and so heavy and I cannot wait for you guys to see the end product. Like, this is probably the proudest I have ever been of a DIY I've made. It is so absolutely adorable and it looks so high end. I cannot stress that enough. Like, it literally looks like I've paid at least $100 for it. And here I'm going to show you guys something I found at the Dollar Tree the other day. It's just these little soak off caps for when you have acrylic nails. And I thought those would be great for um, putting on your fingers when you're having to touch hot glue because they're just little silicone finger covers. So if you're in your Dollar Tree to get essentials, you might look and see if they have those. Here I'm going back in, in every little corner where everything meets and just kind of putting another bead of hot glue just to make sure this is good and sturdy because I don't ever want it to fall apart. So I'm taking my five gallon paint stir sticks and I am going to kind of measure on the sides here. Instead of actually measuring with the measuring tape, I'm just holding them up there and marking them off and that way that I'm exactly sure they're right where they need to be. So I'm marking them with my pencil making sure how many I need across and with the length that I made it I needed three and that fit exactly so here I'm going to take and stack up my stir sticks and just take my little miter saw I got this at Harbor Freight it comes with the saw and the miter saw box and I think it was about ten dollars and I'm gonna cut through all three of those I do go back later when I'm making the paint stir sticks for the back side and I take them out to the garage and use my chop saw to cut them, which is much quicker and easier. But this is an easy option if you don't have like a chop saw. And here I'm just going back and make sure that my cut was right, make sure that they fit correctly. And then I'm marking off the other side. So that I can cut those. And 
and I want you guys to tell me, is this a DIY that you would try to create yourself? I'm going to take my little ladybug vacuum cleaner. I saw that on someone else's channel and I had to get one and it works so well. She's not lying. And here I'm just kind of sanding the edges just to make sure they're smooth before I go to stain these. There's the ladybug again. So I'm getting my little plate back out and I'm going to dump in a little bit more of that antiquing wax. A little bit more water and then just brush it on to all of the edges and then wipe it back down and here I'm going in with some Waverly chalk paint I believe it's in hazelnut it's a it's a color that's really close to a wood stain and I'm going to paint the foam board on all of the sides and that's just so if you see through any of the cracks in the jingle blocks or the little paint stir sticks that it's going to look like wood behind it. It's not going to look like, hey, there's a white foam board back there. And then at this point, I realize I have not made a bottom yet. So I go back and make a bottom exactly the way I made the sides and the front and back. I cut out a piece of foam board, glue around, and then I go back and paint that as well with that hazelnut paint. And as you can see, I've moved the skewers into the <laughs> arena. And here I'm just trying to measure how long I need to cut them. And I wanted them to be about level with the top 
of where the wood and where the box is going to end. I wanted them to be level there. So I took a tip I saw on someone else's page and I used a new pair of dog toenail clippers and you could cut two at a time. And this took forever. And I tried using my miter saw box and cutting like a whole bag. That did not work at all. So I continue cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And then I realized, oh, I can tape them together and use my chop saw. So much faster, do them all that way. Because you have to cut like five million. You can get the skewers at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at Walmart, whichever you prefer. Um, I got mine at Walmart only because my husband was going to Walmart to get essentials. And so he just got them there. Here, I'm taking my now dry paint stir sticks. I'm putting on a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue just so it gets that instant hold, but it also gets that stronger wood glue hold. And I'm just gonna glue all of these paint sticks down. This is on one of the ends of the box. Still making sure that they're all going to line up and not hang over the edge too much. Like I said, I'm putting a little bit of wood glue and then also some hot glue. And I'm kind of trying to remember to put some in between each of the paint stir sticks. And I don't think I remember to do that with every single one of them, but I do put a lot of glue on there so they get good and stuck down. Taking one of my Dollar Tree clamps and just kind of letting it help hold for a minute while it gets that hot glue kind of dried in place. Going back in on the other end and doing the same thing, just putting some wood glue and some hot glue. And then lining it up exactly with the edge using one of my clamps again. And I'm trying to keep this in frame as much as possible, but because I can't see, it's kind of hard. <laughs> Forgive me.
And here I'm kind of going back in and just filling in any little cracks that there are in between the wood. Just again to give it a little bit more strength. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that. And now I'm going to start with my Jenga blocks. The tumbling tower blocks that come from the Dollar Tree, some of the sets come with those darker Jenga blocks in them, and that's what these are. I did not do anything to those. I didn't stain them or anything. They came that color. So I'm going to actually invert the colors on the one from Anthropology. The darker color is the majority of them, like where my ones that are stained are. And I wanted more of that stained look all over so it would match the sides in the back and then do that darker strip down the middle. So here I'm kind of trying to figure out my layout and this is where those half blocks come in. On about every other strip, I'm putting one of the half blocks at the end. And then on the next stripe up, I'm putting the half block at the other end, if that makes sense. So that they will be offset just a little bit on each row. So I tried to put this in not so sped up so you could kind of see what I was doing. Um, I do realize here in a minute that that very first row that I laid down should have had the half block at the end rather than right there by the dark block that's in the center. So I do go back and move that over to the end and readjust those three blocks. And I'm so glad I did because I'm very OCD and that would have bugged the crap out of me. <laughs> Is anyone else OCD like me? Like that would have drove me insane. So here everything's looking good. And like I said, I get these glued down and then I realize that they're backwards. So I do go back and fix that. You can see that I've already fixed it there. And then I sped this up for you guys just so you didn't have to watch every single one. I did the same thing on this. I did a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue on each block just so it would have that extra sticking power because I didn't want any of these to fall down. And then when I get done, they lined up at the top. On the back here, I just laid those out like I did the sides. I measured them and drew them out with a pencil and then I took them out to my chop saw and cut them off. And there is one right there in the center that I actually had to cut down one of my stir sticks to be a little bit thinner because if you used solid pieces, they were too wide. So I did go back and I tried to hide it in the middle. Originally, I was gonna put it off to one end and I thought, nope, that will drive me crazy too. <laughs> it will be off-centered so, and it still is off-centered a little, but I tried to kind of hide it in there so it wasn't as noticeable. And with these, I'm just lining them up along the top edge because the top edge is the one that was the most important. I needed everything to be completely at the same level up there. And I hope that all, all of this makes sense. And if you have any questions, if there's something I didn't explain very well, then put a comment down below and I'll answer you as soon as I see it. I try to go into as much detail as I can without boring you. Here I am trying to use that glue gun again and you can see the glue stick is just balling up in there and no glue is coming out. I don't know what the issue is with it. Like I said, that thing is brand new and it's just, it does not like me. I was so excited to have a cordless glue gun and the crafting gods were like, nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> and I'm 
almost to the last one here. And the bottom, I didn't put any wood on it. I just left it as the foam board. I mean, you could finish that if you wanted to. No one's going to see it. So I just left it as just the painted foam board. So I let this set for just a little bit and then we're going to put our skewers in. I'm gonna set all of these out here. I think I ended up putting in, if I remember correctly, about 15 to 17 packages of skewers. Now, that was partially my fault. I thought I was going to use about 10 packages, but I guess I did make the actual size of this a little bit larger than I had originally planned. So, that is it guys. It is so cute. The pictures do not do it justice. It is adorable and looks so expensive in person. You guys definitely need to make one. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. I hope I've given you a little bit of inspiration. Don't forget before you leave to hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell right next to it. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. See you next time.